Okay, thank you very much. We have a very special group of people with us today. These are escapees from North Korea. Uh, there have been many of them over the last year, and it seems to be more and more. Uh, it's a tough place to live, and people aren't liking it. It's great danger, great risk. Song Ho was uh, with us the other night at the State of the Union address and really made an incredible impression on me and on everybody else, both on television and in that magnificent room. And I had an opportunity to meet with some of the folks, and their stories are amazing. And I thought through our really fabulous interpreter, we could probably uh, go through a couple of the stories, because they're incredible and very inspirational. So, escapees from North Korea. 네, 안녕하십니까. 지금 여기에 아주 특별한 손님들을 모셨습니다. 북한에서 오신 탈북자들입니다. 어, 지금 내가 알기로는 많은 사람들이 북한을 탈출하고 있다고 봅니다. 북한은 아주 살기 어려운 곳이고 또 위험한 곳이기도 합니다. 내 옆에 있는 사람은 그 연구 교수 때 어, 제가 초청했던 지성호 씨입니다. 어, 그날 지성호 씨의 이야기는 아주 감동적이었고 TV를 통해서 또그 의사당에서 많은 사람들에게 감동을 주었습니다. 어, 나는 또 여기 있는 탈북자 여러분들의 그러한 이야기를 또 들을 예정입니다. 또 통역을 통해서 이분들의 그 여러 가지 스토리를 듣고 또 영감을 얻고 용기를 얻을 것입니다. 감사합니다. Before we start, I just had a phone call with the president of South Korea, President Moon, and they are in dialogue, at least as it concerns the Olympics, and that's a good thing, not a bad thing. And uh, we had a great call. I also spoke to uh, Prime Minister Abe of Japan, and we also had a very good call. So it's a very tricky situation. We're going to find out how it goes, but we think the Olympics will go very nicely. And after that, who knows? We'll find out. We're going to find out pretty soon, I suspect. So uh, spoke to President Moon, spoke to Prime Minister Abe, and they were both very good calls, both concerning, essentially concerning, North Korea. So, uh, perhaps you do that, and then I will uh, I'll go ahead and we'll introduce a couple of the folks. 아 그리고 조금 전에 그 한국의 문 대통령과 통화를 했습니다. 아 지금 그 북한과 올림픽에 관해서 대화를 하고 있다고 얘기를 들었습니다. 그리고 올림픽 관련해서 대화하는 것은 나쁘지 않고 좋은 일이라고 봅니다. 아 그래서 상당히 좋은 대화를 했고 또 일본의 아베 총리와도 통화를 했습니다. 아, 우리가 이 문제가 어렵지만 아, 올림픽에 관련해서 좋은 일이 일어나길 바라고 또 올림픽 후에는 어떻게 될지는 어, 우리가 두고 봐야 알게 되겠죠. 아베 대통령과 문 대통령과는 아주 북한에 대해서 또 좋은 대화를 했다라고 말씀드립니다. Who would like to tell the story? Would you like to start by saying what happened and how it is over there? Because the world would like to hear. 그 자신의 얘기를 먼저 말씀해 주십니까? 했습니까? 북한에서 어떤 경험을 하고 또 자기 어떻게 만났지? 그 저는 북한에서 그 대학에서 그 학생들에게 주체 소락을 가르치던 어, 교수입니다. Yes, I taught in North Korea. I was a university professor. I actually taught Juche ideology, which is the North Korean leader's ideology. 그러다가 그 2004년에 어, 탈북을 했습니다. 그래서 그 탈북하게 된 동기는 어, 뭐라고 할까? 어쨌든 그 저희 남편이 정치범으로 잘못되는 바람에 그 탈북하게 됐습니다. 그래 가족들이 정치범 시험소에 가야 돼서. And I uh, fled North Korea in 2004, and the reason was my, uh, my family was identified as a political uh, prisoner, so we all had to go to a political prison. So we decided to uh, flee and escape North Korea. That's tough stuff. That's pretty tough. So you get out, and hopefully you're enjoying your life? 네, 그래서 어려운 곳에서 탈북해서 지금 삶에 만족하고 행복하십니까? 네, 사실 전 그, 탈북할 때는, 그, 탈북하자고 저는 생각도 안 했다가 지금 탈북을 하게 됐는데, 탈북할 때는 참 불안했습니다. 그래, 왜냐하면, 그, 우리가 북한 체제에 충성을 다해야 된다고 항상 교육을 받았기 때문에, 
그, 이 체제를 벗어난다는 게왜 그런지 그, 체제를 배신하는 것 같아서 그 남편이 잘못되었음에도 불구하고 그때까지도 아마 어딘가 모르게 충성심이 마음에 남아 있었던 것 같아요. 그래서 참 불안했댔는데 어, 남쪽으로 오면서 어, 저한테 어떤 새로운 삶이 있으리라고는 생각도 못하고 사실은 넘어왔어요. 근데 Yes, when I was escaping North Korea, I was never exposed and never experienced outside world, so I was very nervous because North Korea regime and North Korea is all I knew. Uh, so I think we were very much brainwashed. And so when I came to South Korea, I could never imagine there was a life like this uh, that I could live outside North Korea. So I was able to get educated in South Korea, and I could say freely whatever I thought, which you couldn't say anything or you couldn't criticize anybody in North Korea. So I'm really living a new life that I had not imagined before. Well, congratulations. That's great. That's great. It's a great story. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Jang Wang Il입니다. I'm from the Korean Civil Defense Force. I've been serving in Korea for three years. My name is Jang Wang Il. I was also imprisoned in North Korea, a political prison. So I was there for three years. 저는 한국에 와서 노첸이라는 단체를 만들어 가지고 지금 현재는 북한 정치범 수용소 해체와 북한의 정보 유입하는 활동을 하고 있습니다. So I am uh, heading an organization in South Korea called No Chain, and the, what we do is to trying to stop uh, abuse in, to North Korean uh, political prisoners in North Korea, and our, we also focus on sending uh, more information to North Korean residents so they are aware of what's happening outside uh, North Korea and inside. 대통령께서 그 한국에 와 오셔가지고 국회에서 한 연설을 보았고 제일 먼저 제가 에, 북한으로 그 연설을 보냈습니다. And we heard uh, President Trump make the uh, remark and speech at the South Korean National Assembly, and I was the first one to translate that speech and send it to North Korea. 그 영상을 본 북한 주민들은 많은 감동을 받았고 또한 힘을 가지고 있더라고. And the people who saw the uh, President Trump's uh, speech at made at the Korean National Assembly got, was very moved and very impressed. Uh, by the speech, and they were able to get you know, confidence and support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hope it helped. That's <laughs> great. Yes, ma'am. 저는 김영순이라고 하고 북한의 정치범으로서 9년 동안 여덕 스토리가 제 이야기고 한국의 뮤지컬을 했고요. 정치범 수용소에서 70년도 김정일의 사생활을 알고 있는 게 죄가 돼서 성혜림하고 친구고 요거 시절부터 대절까지 그래서 여덕 수용소로 가게 됐습니다. Yes, my name is Kim Young Soon. I was a political prisoner in uh, North Korea. I was imprisoned in Yodok uh, prison for nine years. There's actually a musical uh, Yodok that is made be, uh, based on my story. And in, I, was, uh, I became a political prisoner because I was friends with uh, Kim Jong Il's wife uh, during high school, so I knew a lot about uh, their lives. Mm. So, 어, 여독 수용소에서 일곱 식구가 들어갔는데 남편은 못 나오는 수용소 7월 4일이 없어지고 여독 수용소에서 제가 일곱 식구 엄마 아빠 아이들 로이 저하고 들어가 가지고 다 죽고 현재 에, 살아 있는 사람 저 하나하고 아들 하나가 어, 중충 장애인으로 있습니다. Uh, there were f seven in our family. My, fa my husband disappeared. I didn't know where he was. Of course, he believed he's dead. So six of us went to the prison. My mother, my, fa my father, and there were four t we had four children. All of them died. And so I am remaining, and I have one son who is uh, phys uh, gravely physically uh, disabled. 반탐 국장이 89년도에 와서 성혜림 때문에 여대 간거 몰랐는데 성혜림은 김정일의 처도 아니며 아들도 낳지 않았다. 이것은 새빨간 유언 비언이다. 다시 한번 어디서 들었거나 유발할 때는 용서치 않는다. 그래서 어, 탈북을 결심했습니다. 그래서 
2001년 2001년 2월 1일에 탈북해서 중국에 2년 6개월 한국에 입국한 지는 이제 14년 됐습니다. So in 1989, um, they said that I was spreading uh, lies because they said that Song Hye-rim is not a real wife of Kim Jong-il and she had, she had no son from Kim Jong-il. So they said, if you spread any more rumors, uh, you'll, be, you'll, you'll feel the consequences. And that's when I decided to flee North Korea. I fled North Korea in 2001 and I spent two and a half years in China. And, and I went and, and I came to South Korea after that, and it's been 14 years since I've lived in South Korea. And things are going well. 그리고 지금 잘 계십니까? 그래서 대한민국에 와서는 어, 한국의 벽돌 한장안 들었어도 대한민국에 와서 긍정적인 마인드를 갖고 감사합니다 하고 살고 있습니다. Yes, after I came to uh, South Korea, I don't think I made any contribution to South Korea, but I, they welcomed me and I have a very positive mind, so I'm very appreciative of what I have right now and live happily. That's great. Great story. Thank you very much. It's an amazing story. Please. Thank you uh, for inviting us to listen. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, Peter Ho uh, from Radio, radio Free Media uh, that uh, who, uh, I have been working 10 years, so I escaped to China in 2000, and I lived in South Korea for seven years. And uh, the Radio Free Asia uh, the forum invited me to work at work in Washington DC. So we uh, are happy in the United States. And last year, I became a uh, US citizen. I, uh, I was uh, very honored to be, uh, become a uh, United States uh, citizen. Great. Yeah. Wow. That's fantastic. Congratulations. It's great. Thank you very much. <coughs> Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. President, my Thank name you. is Hans Harley. And I'm the author of The Girl with the Seven Names. And I come from the most ridiculous country on earth. First, I want to thank you for that you said that the US will act alone for North Korea if China does not help. That made me cry because that's what exactly what I wanted to hear for so long from like leaders like you. And I was presented at your speech at the South Korea's National Assembly last November, and I really wanted to shout with joy because I was so moved. You put the spotlight on North Korean human rights issues in front of the entire South Korean National Assembly and re re refreshed the attention on these kind of issues, so I cannot thank you enough. Escaping from North Korea is not like living in another country. It's more like living in another universe. I will never truly be free of its gravity no matter how far I journey. After I escaped to China, I escaped an arranged marriage when I was 19, and I also escaped a brothel. And eventually I arrested by the Chinese police but narrowly avoided being repatriated to North Korea because of my Chinese language abilities. They couldn't believe that I was a North Korean defector. Due to all the dangers surrounding me, that I have to change my name so many times hiding in China. So I became the girl with the seven names, which is the title of my memoir. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, because of, uh, the Chinese government continued to repatriate North Korean defectors back to China, back to North Korea, where torture and imprisonment and the horrifying public executions are standard even today. So many North Korean defectors, even today, they are carrying poisons with them in case they are caught in China on their way to freedom to South Korea. They would rather die, kill themselves, than be repatriated to North Korea and suffer horrif horrifying results from the regime. So, Mr. President, please help us to stop the repatriations 
from China and give North Korean people the freedom that they deserve. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's an amazing title of a book. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Mr. President, my name is Kwang uh, Jin uh, Kim. I defected in 2003. I worked in Singapore as a banking agent. I worked for Mr. Zhang Songte, who was executed, brutally killed by his cousin. Uh, and I ran revolution farm there. And I was lucky to escape North Korea with my wife and son. My son is now staying. He actually, you know, graduated Yorktown High School here in Arlington. And I worked for two years for uh, Human Rights Committee, U.S. Human Rights Committee in North Korea here in Washington, D.C. Since I uh, defected, I began to study uh, work for government think tank, which is called INSS. Uh, writing reports on North Korea and security issues. Uh, and, you know, I really want to thank you for your wonderful remarks at the State of the Union and the invitation of our friend Z there. Uh, she was the only foreigner invited there. And I think, and also thank you very much for your speech last year at the South Korean Assembly. And I'm sure that your message will be, will, you know, discredit uh, the, you know, force, the, <clears throat> uh, will uh, discredit the, I just <laughs> forgot that, you know, exact wording, you know, of your speech. Uh, uh, you know, it will give courage to the North Korean elite uh, and, you know, will be a great inspiration to many people there. So thank you so much. For well, thank you very much. It's really, they're incredible stories. We actually have uh, two other people outside, and they're literally afraid of execution. They didn't want to be with cameras, and I can understand that. They were very concerned with that, and we would certainly not want to force them to be here. So they're right outside, but they didn't want to be on camera for a lot of very bad reasons. Uh, I want to thank you. You were so incredible the other night during the State of the Union, the story of walking across China. And further than that, it was sort of a funny story. When I said, I'd like to have him stand, one of my people said, don't ask him stand. He lost his foot. His leg is in terrible shape. I said, he just walked across China. So he had no problem standing. I mean, to do what you've done is incredible. So would you like to say a few words? <웃음> 어, 지금 그 여러 가지 말씀해 주신 거 대단히 감사드립니다. 그리고 또 지금 이 자리에 함께하지 않은 탈북자 두 사람이 있습니다. 그 사람들은 어, 만약에 자기들의 사진이 나가면 은 어떤 처형이 당하거나 이런 불이익을 당할 수 있기 때문에 지금 바깥에서 또 기다리고 있습니다. 그렇게 북한은 그렇게 두려운 정권이라는 것입니다. 그리고 지금 옆에 앉은 지성호 씨 어, 감사드립니다. 그 연두 교수 때 아주 놀랍고 감명 있는 그러한 그 얘기를 해 주셔서 굉장히 감사드리는데 그 뒤에 그 굉장히 재밌는 얘기가 있습니다. 뭐냐면은 내가 아, 지성호 씨의 얘기를 들은 다음에 아 그러면 그 사람이 일어나게 하자 그랬더니 내 옆에 스태프들이 아, 다리가 불편해가지고 못 일어난다라고 하더군요. 그래서 내가 무슨 소리냐 그 저기 그 다리를 가지고 중국을 거쳐서 대한민국까지 왔는데 일어날 수 있을 것이다라고 했는데 과연 그 연도 교수 때 지성호 씨가 일어나셔서 많은 사람들에게 아, 감명을 주었습니다. 감사합니다. 얘기 좀 주시겠습니까? 아 저는 이제 그 상상 어, 상상할 수 없는. 그렇게 이제 크고 정말 이제 놀라운 자리에 이제 섰습니다. 또한 정말 이제 그 영광은 평생 이제 잊을 수 없는 그런 영광입니다. 얼마나 많이 울었는지는 이제 기억이 안 나고요. 어, 정말 이제 그 마치고 이제 방에 돌아와서도 엄청 울었고요. 또한 이제 대통령께서 이제 그 인스타그램에 이제 저희 스토리를 써서 이제 다 올려주신 것을 제가 봤어요. 또 울었습니다. 그리고 어, 정말 이제 지난해 이제 대한민국 우회 제가 초청 받아가지고 이제 대통령 연설할 때 이제 그 초청 받았었는데요. 그때도 이제 울었고 제가 이제 대한민국에 와가지고 제일 많이 이제 어 연설을 들으면서 울었던 어 그분이 이제 트럼프 대통령님이시고 
그리고 이제 정말 북한 주민들을 제일 많이 사랑해 주셔서 너무 감사합니다. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is unimaginable for me to be here and invited in such incredible you know, events. Uh, I think this honor I will not forget and that I'll carry it for the rest of my life. And I've been crying a lot these past few days. Uh, after I returned from the State of the Union address, when I came back to the hotel, I kept crying uh, because I was so moved by the whole uh, experience. And I also uh, saw that President Trump had also put my story on, on the Instagram, so I cried again. And actually, when President Trump came to South Korea and delivered his uh, speech at the Korean National Assembly, I, I cried as well. So actually, uh, the, the speeches that I was so moved and influenced and brought me to tears are the two speeches that I heard from President Trump. And I'm so appreciative that President Trump uh, thinks about uh, the people in North Korea are suffering and that you're paying attention and trying to help us. So thank you. Well, we do, and those are amazing stories. And I want to thank you all for being here. This is the Oval Office, very famous office. I guess most of you have heard about the Oval Office. A lot of things happen here. Hopefully, they're all for the good, but a lot of things happen right in this space. So it's my honor to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. I think it's terrible. You want to know the truth? I think it's a disgrace. What's going on in this country, I think it's a disgrace. The memo was sent to Congress. It was declassified. Congress will do whatever they're going to do. But I think it's a disgrace what's happening in our country. And when you look at that, and you see that, and so many other things, what's going on, a lot of people should be ashamed of themselves, and much worse than that. So I sent it over to Congress. They will do what they're going to do. Whatever they do is fine. It was declassified. And let's see what happens. But a lot of people should be ashamed. Thank you very much. Are you not concerned that the FBI doesn't want the memo out? Thank you very much. You, you figure that one out. I don't think so. These are just great people that have suffered incredibly. There were many, many others like them that have suffered so much. And they were here, and I said, let's, uh, let's tell you a story very quickly. We have others in a different room, as I told you, that are really petrified to be here. Petrified. So it's, it's tough stuff. It's tough stuff. Well, we're doing a lot. Uh, we've done more than uh, — I mean, we have many administrations that should have acted on this a long time ago. When uh, when it wasn't at this kind of a — when we weren't in this kind of a position. You know, we ran out of road. You know the expression. The road really ended. They could have done it 12 years ago. They could have done it 20 years ago. They could have done it four years ago and two years ago. We have no road left. So we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, we'll get through the Olympics, and maybe something good can come out of the Olympics. Who knows? Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.